It was supposed to be a boring election. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah al Khamenei, had hoped the country's next president would be a loyal fundamentalist. But two candidates have jumped into the race at the last minute that have given the regime a cause for concern. One is Mr. Rafsanjani, a former uh, president, but who is also what's quite an important figure behind uh, the Green Movement. This is the movement that uh, essentially drove the candidacy of um, Mir Hussein Mousavi back in 2009. And that was an election that was rigged, and the result was a lot of unrest, um, and the Green Movement was then crushed. Uh, so for him to, you know, for a, a very prominent figure to come back with such a challenge right now uh, makes this a much more interesting election. There's also a second candidate, um, Mr. Mashai, who is a very close aide of the current president, the very controversial um, Ahmadinejad. Uh, and he's also put forward his candidacy. And he also represents a very anti-establishment uh, candidacy. The Guardian Council, Iran's constitutional watchdog, will now vet the candidates to verify they are loyal to the Islamic regime. The Supreme Leader isn't keen on either candidate, but that's not to say one of them won't survive this process. If you read uh, what's going on in the Iranian press, it's not at all clear what the Guardian Council will do. Um, to allow both these candidates to run, in some ways, is a tacit uh, admission that there are problems in the country and certainly to allow Rafsanjani to run when they've all accused him of being uh, sort of the leader of the sedition in the previous, uh, uh, in the previous election uh, would, would certainly be a clear indication that, uh, that all is not right in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And the fact that two figures that the Supreme Leader isn't keen on have joined the race is a direct challenge to his authority. But there was civil unrest in Iran four years ago after Mahmoud Ahmadinejad won a second term as president. And there's a danger that might happen again if this election is also widely seen to be rigged. On the one hand, obviously people will be very upset by another massive rigging of an election. If they were, if the sense was that people overwhelmingly voted for a candidate and then somebody else became president, um, that could, and that combined with a lot of economic grievances right now because of the sanctions, but also because of the Ahmadinejad government's mismanagement of the economy. So there's a real risk there uh, of grievances turning into street protests or so, uh, social unrest. On the other hand, they do look around the region now, and particularly at Syria, for example, and certainly the way that Syria has gone and Iran is backing the Syrian, uh, the Iranian regime backs the Syrian regime. I think that would be rather discouraging. Elections in Iran are supposed to renew the legitimacy of the Islamic system. But in recent times, they've become the only real way to challenge it. Western leaders with an eye on negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program would like a pragmatic president. But that desire is not at the top of the Supreme Leader's priorities. The Islamic Republic, because it still adheres to this myth of popularity, needs to put on a show. And this, at the end of the day, is political theatre. And we have to look at it as political theatre that's very heavily managed. They can't risk going through what they did last time, because it almost brought the Islamic Republic to its knees. Attention now turns to the vetting process later this week to see which candidates will survive. The West would prefer a pragmatic leader, someone that has the trust of the Supreme Leader and who might be able to move the regime in a more moderate direction. But the West might not get what it wants, and that might also be the case for the Iranian people. Daniel Garahan, Financial Times.